Hello, I'm Aisha Subarkash and welcome to the special edition of Straight Talk from Ankara. For the past three days, the Turkish capital hosted Pakistan's Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif. Since taking the post back in April, after then Prime Minister Imran Khan was ousted in a no-confidence vote, Mr. Sharif has been shoring up relations with Pakistan's closest allies. His latest stop, Turkey. He met with Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan on Wednesday, covering everything from trade and defense ties to addressing regional security threats. Sharif said that Pakistan stands with Turkey in its fight against terrorism, adding, enemies of Turkey are enemies of Pakistan. Despite the abrupt change in Pakistan's leadership, relations between Ankara and Islamabad have remained strong. Just last month, the two countries celebrated the launch of a new warship, built by a Turkish company and commissioned for the Pakistani Navy. Prime Minister Sharif also made a key announcement in late May that he wanted Turkey to join a multi-billion dollar transport project being financed by China that will make Pakistan a vital transport and energy link. I sat down with the Prime Minister to discuss that proposal along with the current economic and political challenges his country is facing. Mr. Prime Minister, welcome and thanks for joining us here. You are here on a three-day visit where you have met President Recep Tayyip Erdogan and several other uh, ministers. How did your meetings go? What did you cover the most? Thank you very much. It was uh, uh, a wonderful trip which uh, will uh, end today and I think we are going to end it on a very positive note. Our meetings with uh, uh, President Tayyip Erdogan have been extremely, extremely cordial and like one family, mm -hmm. uh, very useful for uh, promoting bilateral relations, our fraternal relations, which go back uh, centuries. And uh, this time we found um, increased uh, warmth and, uh, you know, sense of, uh, you know, unity and uh, sense of uh, understanding mm -hmm. between uh, the two leadership. I think it has been a phenomenal visit and I would once again through your uh, good offices like to thank President Tayyip mm -hmm. for recording this extremely warm welcome. I was going to ask about that. For decades, Turkey and Pakistan maintained good ties regardless of uh, who, which party was in power in both countries. What's the uh, driving force behind this almost unshakable bond between the people two. to people bonds mm. which are grounded in in, uh, uh, in history in fact uh, when we go back uh, uh, pre-partition times uh, in uh, you know undivided uh, India mm -hmm. Muslims at that point in time and uh, you were fighting the war of independence and uh, uh, Turkish movement was uh, supported by uh, Muslims in India in a very big way mm -hmm. and uh, at that point in time uh, our forefathers you know you know the mothers and children they contributed whatever they could to support this uh, independent movement in Turkey yes and uh, this was a, f a phenomenal contribution but I always say little uh, did our forefathers know that this will become a permanent bond of uh, brotherhood uh, between the two uh, nations for all time to come. Mm -hmm. And that is why, uh, even when we speak, uh, Turks always say, uh, brother, we will not forget what you did for Turkey in those days. This is remarkable and unique and very unique relationship. So the deep ties between Turkey and Pakistan were at display recently after the launching of the PN Milgam Corvette for Pakistan's Navy. Can you talk about how defense is one of the core aspects of uh, strong ties between Ankara and Islamabad? Uh, this is what I think it's all about, that uh, uh, two nations and uh, one soul and two hearts. That's the, uh, I think, the most befitting explanation I can make about this relationship. So whether it's defense or it's trade or it's culture, investment, I think we speak the same language even though we speak different languages. So how ha have Turkish projects helped boost uh, Pakistan's military and are there any 
uh, future projects, joint yes, projects? Yes, uh, this uh, Miljam Kuwait mm -hmm. uh, was launched uh, on 20th of May and uh, uh, Defense Minister of Turkey was there along with me and it was a great sight to watch. And this is what we want, mm -hmm. joint collaboration and joint manufacturing of not only this warship, but other uh, areas of defense as well, whether mm -hmm. these are tanks or, or missiles, etc. Uh, we won't be able to uh, discuss more uh, in this interview. Suffice it to say sure. that we are working very closely with each other because enemies of Turkey are enemies of Pakistan mm -hmm. and vice versa. So, Mr. Prime Minister, yesterday during your meeting with President Erdogan, you voiced support for Turkey's anti-terror operations and uh, Erdogan has announced a new operation, an anti-terror operation will be launched uh, soon against the YPG in northern Syria. Can you talk about how the two countries can cooperate on the fight against terrorism? Well, uh, we are ourselves uh, 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 victims of uh, terrorism, you know, sure. uh, back in 2000 onwards and with great sacrifices and great efforts uh, by the people of Pakistan, by the armed forces of Pakistan, by the law enforcing agencies, by the ordinary citizen, were we able to you know, defeat this menace, although it's still there, but largely it has been defeated. Therefore, we not only uh, you know, condemn PKK and uh, other uh, FATO groups, but we fully support uh, the efforts of uh, Turkish leadership. So, uh, as you've mentioned, cooperation is not just limited to defense and trade. Uh, no. You previously said the ongoing uh, China-Pakistan economic uh, corridor project was set to translate regional connectivity and uh, trilateral arrangements, which will include uh, Turkey, could prove beneficial for the region of uh, people. Yes. Could you elaborate on that? I mean, how could Turkey play a role in this multi-billion dollar project? Yeah. Uh, that looks to make Pakistan a crucial transport point and economic link in the region. That is exactly what I proposed to my dear brother, President Tayyip Erdogan yesterday and to other uh, Turkish leaders that CPAC is an offshoot of uh, Belt and Road, mm -hmm. a vision of President Xi Jinping. And Pakistan is uh, one of uh, major beneficiary of, uh, of this vision and we have uh, launched um, multi-billion dollar projects in Pakistan for the welfare of the people of Pakistan. Now, uh, to further enhance uh, this initiative and uh, really have uh, uh, great uh, you know, work uh, for the public welfare and uh, progress and prosperity of Pakistan, mm -hmm. I have proposed that let Pakistan, China and Turkey be partners in this game of uh, great uh, vision mm -hmm. to uh, enhance How it. is China reacting to that? Are they well, welcoming I don't this? think China will have uh, any, that's my personal opinion, will have any uh, reservation because it's not only about Pakistan, it's about peace, security and progress in the region. Mm -hmm. And Turkey uh, obviously is uh, a player. Turkey has great expertise in hydro power generation, in um, you know renewable generation and Turkey has very large outfits of uh, uh, construction companies which can play a very pivotal role because you know we are at the crossroads you know from uh, Xinjiang towards Pakistan I think Turkey can take up certain projects to road infrastructure Turkey has great expertise like uh, hydro power generation Turkey has great expertise so if we you know, uh, put together expertise, energies and financial resources of these three countries. This will be a great win-win story in times to come. So I assume you want uh, the trade volume between the two countries to reach uh, $5 billion within We three signed protocol yesterday. Yes, but you're, you want to achieve that goal in three years, I think. Is this doable? No, yesterday. <laughs> okay, no, I mean, in three yes, years, right. you're targeting the exactly. trade volume between the two countries will reach uh, $5 billion. That's How right. is that going to play out? What I think, kind uh, of industries is, you're targeting? This at? is a very, uh, I don't call it an ambitious target because our ambitions between the two nations are well known that we want to really become uh, uh, closest to each other. Mm -hmm. uh, we are, as brothers, 
but uh, we need to convert and transform these relations into trade, investment, uh, promotion of commerce, e-commerce, agriculture, you know, textile, etc., so that the people on both sides really benefit from uh, these fraternal relations. Mm -hmm. I don't think uh, we are doing justice to uh, our uh, you know, centuries-old relations in terms of what we are doing in the field of trade and investment. It is, I think, uh, not a very good reflection, and we need to really correct that. And President Tayyip Erdogan is very keen. I'm very grateful to him that yesterday, when I raised this point, within hours, a protocol was, was signed, and I think this is a reflection of his commitment and his pledge that both countries will really move forward, cut uh, red tip, cut uh, barriers, hurdles, and move forward with lightning speed. And that's what I want, and I will do my best to ensure that we achieve this, even though it is an ambitious target, but ambitions are valid. Did the Turkish president give you uh, an exact time uh, for, the, for Turkey's inclusion in this uh, energy corridor, though? I think, uh, uh, you know, sky is the limit. Okay. Because uh, we are, uh, you know, at the moment, uh, like other countries, developing countries in the world, are having uh, difficulties uh, to contain inflation, galloping inflation, mm -hmm. you know, foreign change, uh, you know, reserves. So we need cheaper sources of energy. We are spending around $20 billion annually to finance the import of uh, expensive petroleum, gas, etc. We want to ultimately replace this. Mm -hmm. This can only happen through increased hydropower generation and renewable energy, yes. which is uh, effective, cost-effective, and uh, doable, easily doable, and it will save time. So we are moving in that direction, mm -hmm. and Turkey can be a very, very active partner in this game. So, Mr. Prime Minister, for the last uh, few years, Pakistan was often caught in the middle uh, between Turkey and the Gulf states and having to maintain a, a balance. But now, Turkey and several Gulf states are looking to repair their ties. Uh, how will that benefit Pakistan and so, the region as well? So, the entire political landscape has changed and uh, for, for the good. And I'm very happy. Yesterday, I had uh, a very uh, useful and uh, fruitful discussion with the President Tayyip Erdogan, and I was very happy to hear his views. And I know for a fact that uh, relations with the UAE have improved a lot with Saudi Arabia. They have uh, become very positive, and these are very good signals, not only between Turkey, UAE, and Saudi Arabia, but for the entire Islamic world and for the global peace and security. Mm -hmm. I think we should all be, not only be very happy about it, but we should be contributing that these relations are, uh, are further uh, enhanced in a positive way because it will become very you know, fruitful and very uh, wonderful for this entire region. Mm -hmm. And uh, in my own, ro my own, own uh, self, I'll play whatever I can and a constructive and productive role to further enhance these relations. It's very good for the Ummah. So, um, given this uh, latest political alignment in the region, is your country also warming up relations with Israel? Well, I think uh, uh, that's something which uh, uh, must be understood in its real perspective. Uh, we uh, are for uh, uh, rights for those subjugated uh, societies around the globe, whether it's Palestine mm -hmm. or, uh, or Kashmiris or uh, other areas in the world where uh, such movements are uh, on struggling for their independent rights. Mm -hmm. Palestine is a case in point. And look at uh, atrocities and uh, you know, hard and harsh measures against them by Israeli forces day in and day out. And it's not a matter of recent history. For the last 60 years, this is happening. And thousands of Palestinians have been, have been killed, their mothers, their children, their houses bombarded, and their business, their livelihood you know, snatched. This is not acceptable, to not only to Pakistan, but to entire 
peace loving societies therefore unless and until uh, you know the issue of palestine is resolved mm -hmm. um, as much as kashmir issue is resolved according to their aspirations and uh, un resolution i don't think peace will return in these parts of the world therefore this is our principal stand and it's not a question of uh, israel or india it's a question of uh, providing uh, moral support diplomatic support to these uh, societies to these people till they have won their rights mm -hmm. and that's our stand so Pakistan is uh, going through some economic hardships nowadays. You have said your main priority would be to revive the economy. How are negotiations uh, with the IMF going now? Well, uh, we, are, uh, uh, we are engaged with IMF and we are doing whatever uh, we can to have IMF on board again. Unfortunately, in the last three and a half years, and we have wasted our time. I'm not here to enter into any kind of uh, political blame game uh, suffice to say that we are trying our best to put our economy in the right direction and difficult as it is it's a huge and humongous challenge but uh, i will not uh, accept uh, defeat this is not in me i was not born on the date so we is will work the hard we'll work untiringly and we'll put things right. So what's your view? I mean, is the uh, IMF likely to increase uh, the size and duration of its uh, bailout program? And you say you're going to fight, but what different measures you are talking about that is different than the previous government yes. in terms of economy? Good question. Uh, while we have to, uh, you know, in a compelling fashion, we are really compelled to increase the uh, cost of uh, oil and gas in Pakistan because mm -hmm. uh, uh, these are skyrocketing uh, mm -hmm. all over the world. Both developing and developed societies are facing this crunch. This is a known fact. So we have to do it. On the other hand, we are offering you know, subsidies to those large sorts of uh, population who are uh, below poverty line, mm -hmm. who are unable to meet their uh, uh, two ends together, who go, uh, you know, without food, a meal a day is very difficult, education, health, and therefore we have to look after these, uh, uh, you know, segments of society. But uh, the IMF wants you to cut those subsidies. Yeah, but we can't. So what's the end I mean, game here? How can you even imagine to uh, walk uh, in the streets of Pakistan without being caring and showing empathy and sympathy for those uh, you know millions of people i mean teeming millions i mean who are uh, uh, under great pressure and are uh, finding it very difficult even to uh, keep their own soul together that is not politics that is not uh, uh, you know uh, government that is not management that is nothing you have to be first human and provide them human touch and, and show, you know, humane, you know, treatment before you, uh, you know, talk to, uh, you know, uh, other entities. Mm -hmm. If IMF thinks that uh, we should not look after, I don't think this is their question, but my answer is, if this is the question, we will look after them under all circumstances. Okay. Speaking of uh, millions of people who are under pressure, uh, could you talk to us about the political situation in Pakistan right now? How is this transition uh, period playing out? Well, I think uh, for the first time in uh, Pakistan's history, uh, a vote of no confidence has yeah. succeeded. Mm -hmm. And this has been uh, constitutional and legal transition, which is uh, provided for in the constitution of Pakistan. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a, it's a big step forward. It's a quantum jump. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, from this point onwards, I think it will be an acceptable norm in Pakistan that this is also uh, a way forward which must be supported. If the majority of parliamentarians mm -hmm. feel that uh, uh, we don't wish to have a government and uh, want to have B government, mm -hmm. they should be allowed the right to vote freely under the law of the land mm -hmm. and have a change of their own desire. This is exactly what has happened. 
previously it were uh, there were different uh, situations martial law you know, military intervention this is so you you think this as a democratic this is, move uh, no. absolutely this has transformed the entire ball game and um, i think it's leading towards more democratic uh, norms mm -hmm. which must be supported in times to come so will the elections be held on time i think about uh, 15 months from now yes that's mm -hmm. right so what's your vision in uh, helping address pakistan's political division what's your road map our road map is a to uh, uh, you know we have accepted these are uh, tough condition challenges we have just explained to handle them mm -hmm. and then find a breathing space you know raise resources and uh, in, in, you know indigenously of course with the support of our brotherly and friendly countries mm -hmm. and rebuild pakistan and prioritize our you know arrangements like we must a try our best to decrease poverty mm -hmm. you cannot finish it in short term but that's our ultimate aim and goal to you know finish poverty from the face of pakistan it takes it will take time in short term to decrease poverty decrease inflation and cut fat in the government sector public sector and show personal example of simplicity mm -hmm. easier said than done but it will be done it and it must be done and then seek support from the people from those uh, uh, starters of, of society who have been blessed with the with the almighty's bounties and uh, infinite resources we will appeal to them please come forward and sacrifice show empathy to poor people and contribute today it's not that what uh, i should get from the government today the question should be what i can give to the government and to the nation you have only 15 uh, months left for the elections will you be therefore, able to eradicate this poverty therefore we therefore we will go for short term measures mm -hmm. maybe short to medium measures mm -hmm. and once uh, we are returned if we are returned by the people of pakistan by the grace of god then we will uh, with uh, full cry and full, with full force you know launch our agenda of prosperity and progress bringing peace in the region mm -hmm. talking to our uh, neighbor especially neighbor in the east please give up uh, hostilities please come to talking table please be kind to your people and let's work together being independent countries to alleviate poverty unemployment disease yes. speaking providing portable water yes. medicine that's important yeah speaking of economic hardships and poverty what's your government's approach to russia's attack on ukraine has it changed <coughs> from the previous government where does pakistan stand amid the ukrainian well, crisis well we are uh, our stand is very principled unwavering that we stand for the uh, uh, independent rights of societies uh, wherever they are around the globe Mm -hmm. uh, like we speak for uh, uh, independence of Kashmir, we hope uh, hostilities will come to an end you know, in Ukraine, and uh, uh, both Russia and uh, Ukraine will come to uh, you know to uh, talk on the table. And I really greatly admire the efforts of President Tayyip Erdogan. He is playing a very constructive role uh, to bring the two warring. states to talking table and if he succeeds in his sincere and serious efforts he'll be remembered for all time to come yes it's a great contribution on his part all right mr prime minister unfortunately we'll have to leave it here thank you very much for joining me on straight thank talk. you uh, madam aisha it's really a pleasure uh, meeting you and talking to you today thank you thank you